get completely stuffed with Bitcoin and be in the money and then take some money on the side, do not commingle this money. I have a massive amount of investments that give you access to a finite product with no CEO, no board to talk to, nobody's door to knock on, no email address. BTC at BTC. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the pod. And in today's episode, I have a special guest. Not only is he a serial entrepreneur doing some really big things throughout the years in really big markets like energy and finance, and is now helping a lot of people as he's dove into the Bitcoin space. It's a pleasure. It's an honor. Gary, thank you. Thank you for coming out. I really appreciate, appreciate you. Good to be here. So, man. Um, our Basel Week. Yeah, our Basel Week, man. Uh, there's there's so much activity going on in Miami. Thank you for coming out. I know it worked perfectly. I know you're doing a lot of networking and stuff down here, looking at a lot of artists or trying to as much as you can. I didn't get I didn't get much of that in it, actually. I, I did not go to one gallery, which is I just went from meeting to meeting to meeting. So. Oh, man. Well, hopefully, hopefully that my changes. Team. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully it changes. No, but we're super glad that you're here, man. And um, what I really love most about just from kind of knowing you over just the past few months of going online and showing the spaces that you've been hosting, man, is your willingness to help other people in this Bitcoin space. You run a super tight ship with Twitter spaces, which is really cool. And I think that speaks a lot to the leadership skills that you've developed over the years. And I just commend you for that because a lot of people in this space, sketchy, they don't actually have the practicality of it. And um, it's really, uh, really, really admirable to see how you've entered the space. Thank really, you. really cool. Um, so for those that don't know, I mean, can you, can you share a little bit of insight of how you got involved in energy? Cause you've gone through some pretty massive exits in that space and uh, it's not just one exit. You've done multiple exits over the years. And so we'd love to kind of get the, the ground floor of how that journey kind of started. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks for being here. Yeah. I re really appreciate you having me Yeah, and doing all this. Um, I got into energy right out of school, uh, study economics and the moment I graduated, I'm like, I got to get out of this town. Mm. Um, went to Houston, asked my sister to introduce me to a man that she knew in the energy space. Now, our family, we don't do favors for each other. I mean, we just don't. That's not our <laughs> family I live in. Um, yeah. And all, so all I asked was, hey, just introduce me to someone in the space, and I'll take it from there. I just wanted to ask somebody for advice. She introduced me to a guy named Dan Montgomery. Mm. It's 21 years old. I still remember all these people's names. I walk into Dan's office. Dan worked for an energy firm. I did not know anything about nat gas, power, or crude oil. Walked into his office. I said, hey, this is who I am. What would you do if you were me? And, and literally, that's what I did because there was no one that had advised me on what to do with a career. Like, mm. and, and the advice was, take a personality test and, oh, gosh, you're going to be a salesman. Right? Like, oh, well, that's awesome, dude. Um, but there's no intention on, Hey, what are your goals? What are your ambitions? Who are you? Mm -hmm. What kind of personality do you have? Yeah. So I get a, I basically asked him to introduce me. He said, I'd be a gas bar. I said, what's that? And, uh, he told me, I said, sounds great, man. He said, you go to lunches, you meet people and you negotiate and you go on hunting and fishing expeditions. Oh, wow. Clients. I'm like, I'm in, dude. Sounds cool <laughs> to me. But literally I was 21 years old, extremely naive knew nothing hmm. uh really tiny town and for your audience because i know that you have a, a lot of you know like 18 to 38 year olds uh number one message is get out of your hometown leave mommy leave daddy leave the girlfriend leave all your buddies and you will find out who you are when you get out of that little comfort zone oh yeah you, know, you will most definitely learn more about yourself um so I went to Houston, that drove me to Houston, um, and I would spend three years working for a really large company, a big pipeline company, okay. and began noticing some things that didn't make sense to me. Like there wasn't, I was beginning to see where people didn't really compete with each other. So I'm mm. working for a company and talk about pricing, and, ah, nickel here, nickel there, no worries. And I'm like, nickel here, nickel there. This this pipeline was empty, and we needed to fill 2 billion cubic feet a day. Per oh, cubic wow. foot, they're saying, hey, a nickel here or there. I'm like, what are you talking about? Dude? A <laughs> nickel here or there. So <clears throat> within months of that realization, mm -hmm. the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission made a change in the way buyers would buy energy. It's a little complicated, but 
Uh, the point is, 22 years old, first experience I had with large companies entering contracts, big, thick contracts, bunch of large government comes in and says, none of those contracts have to be honored. Well, Boom. Okay, first quarter 478. That would become the moment where I'm like, oh, wow, look at this disruption, dude. This is awesome. And that's what started my career in building companies that are always moving into highly disruptive environments. It, 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 literally, you'll see every time, oh, what, what, just follow me around. you like, Gary's looking for disruption. Mm-hmm. So we were able to take a product that, a very cartelled product. I mean, a very clubby, clubby product, pricing that never went down. It only went up. Mathematically, they made the price go up. Wow. Uh, very, uh, n- nothing about supply and demand. Um, and that market would change to today. And I, and, I, and I would maintain that there was about 50 men who were responsible for literally changing the entire way that energy trades in the United States from long-term 20-year contracts to half-hour pricing, half-day oh, pricing, wow. daily pricing. Today, you have prints on Henry Hub, derivatives, options. None of that was done um, in 1990. Oh, so wow. There's a whole, like, in order to get to where you're going with, like, derivatives and algos, right. there is physical product that moved before. Right. And, and, and so that background really uh, taught me how to like trace capital going into a well or well bore uh, into the ground of the Gulf of Mexico. Mm-hmm. And then how much, how, w- how much money would it take to move all those units of energy to somebody in Texas or somebody in Canada, or in fact, put it on a ship and ship it over to uh, Europe. Right. Yeah. So you had to become very, very good with the puzzle pieces. Well, once you do that, then you become really proficient at understanding the entire value chain, right. a complex value chain between and, co- producer and consumer. And it doesn't really matter what the product is. Hmm. Once you figured out what power is, it, it, it doesn't matter if it's a toy, a blanket. Hmm. Um, so I'd spent, I spent 22 years in that space. Left uh, Dynagy, that this was, would become a Fortune 30 company, man. Like wow. before the word unicorn meant anything other than, you know, unicorn. Yeah, like a tech uh, company or something uh, we, like that. There was no, I mean, this was a bunch of, the, probably 15, I think I was the number 12 employee. But the company's name was Natural Gas Clearinghouse. And I love the name because it said exactly what we're going to do. We're going to clear <laughs> nag gas, man. Super easy to know. Yeah, super easy. And I will tell you that we grossly underestimated the opportunity. Mm. Uh, one, just look at the name, natural gas clearinghouse. We ended up trading fiber, electricity, the most violent commodity in the world, um, owning big gen sets, owning all the storage in one country. Wow. Like, like over a lunch table. This company so grossly underestimated what its addressable market is. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the thing I've learned now. When you have a really disruptive moment, like when the car's going down and you realize, hey, this is now getting ready to take a 30 to 50, 90 degree bend, uh, yeah. pivot. <clears throat> uh, those moments are, it's just too much gravity for the old school legacy player mm. who was used to moving slowly, thinking about things. There's not a lot of competition. There's not much transparency. And you'll notice that's a common thing in mm. any market that is not transparent there's pretty much i'm i'm quite certain like to 100 percent, there is margin being generated and made that is not deserved mm, yeah it's just siphoning no off of the, the the people that are participating in the market it's all shadow stuff and Correct. just taking fees it might be now. fines might be fees might be a little leakage here and there it's not efficient so tr- when transparency is not in a market and it's definitely not in finance yeah yeah you know there's a problem, and what when I say there's a problem, there's an opportunity to, like I believe that all arbitrages go away sooner or later. Mm. If they're apparent to anyone, and price, yes. by arbitrage I mean the difference in um, energy in Louisiana versus energy mm. in the UK, there's an arbitrage in between there because the prices are not the same. Right, it could be 
logistics arbitrage, just how much does it cost to transport? Um, once all that becomes available, and that's what's happening in digital assets very rapidly, right? Mm -hmm. It's not only happening in digital, it's really happening. It's impacting the other worlds, the legacy worlds. Yeah, yeah. So did that 22 years, man, and um, woke up one morning. My boss said we were going to make a billion dollars, and I think this was 2000. I had never sold one wow. share of stock. Uh, had been given options for every year. And, uh, you know, I really love the company. Uh, he said, we're going to make a billion dollars. I'm like, I, as soon as I hung on the phone, I called the broker, sell everything, sell every drop of options and stock I have. Mm. And, uh, three days later, the board would shut down the entire executive team from selling any of their stock. And most of those guys got stuck with it. I sold at around 47 price went to a sub dollar in six months. Wow. Enron, Enron just sucked everything down. Oh man. Uh, so t it was a good timing. I learned to, to really trust my instincts. Remember I had never sold a drop. Mm -hmm. Um, and took off, I think I was 41, took off seven, eight years. Wow. 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 That's an insane, insane move because it's so contrary to what executives are saying or the peers are probably saying to, to lean on your gut instinct to cash out. <laughs> and we all know what kind of happened with Enron. Like that was <laughs> a pretty crazy fiasco. So um, that that's really interesting that you built that instinct over time. And when you were talking about disruption, I think that that's that same tingly feeling where you're like, hey, something's happening here. There's a big move. And I don't think enough entrepreneurs lean into that, especially when they're young. They There's a bigger game being played than just Bitcoin moving from 30 grand to 40. Oh, yeah. whatever. There's so much more going on behind the scenes. And so... Um, when you started to get into the digital asset space, I mean, what made you jump from, you know, old legacy stuff and jumping in full force into helping people in their, their digital asset game? Well, by that time I had, uh, built three cup, helped build, I helped build Dynagy. And then I went to London and I built two really cool businesses for Dynagy. Oh, okay, cool. Um, you know, six, seven, eight billion dollar businesses. I mean, like crackers went over there with one person, me. Uh, we would, after that, we would have in three years, first three years, I think we made 120 million pounds, man. When the, wow. when the pound sterling was 1.8, I think 1.76, oh, went man. over there with a budget to make a million dollars. And the Brits were like, it's not even worth doing. Like it, it, they made, they had made, uh, our partners had made 3 billion sterling the year before at 176. So they're making four and a half, five billion dollars a year in net income, monopoly, and I'm looking at it going. And they're our partners, but I'm looking at it going, dude, that's just wrong. <laughs> One guy gets to make four billion dollars. In order to sell energy in the United Kingdom, you had to talk to one human being. His name was James Alcock. I still remember his name too. Oh, Old really? guy. He had to go have lunch. I had lunch with him, pay homage to him. And I remember telling this guy, he was probably 20 years, 30 years older than me. I said, you know, James, I really admire what, you, what you've done here, but you will never know whether you were a great gas buyer, a shitty gas buyer, or just an average negotiator. And he was mm. shocked. He was shocked. At, he said, how could you possibly say that? You've never had any competition. No, oh, well, you're a monopoly dude. Like, when I have to come pay homage to you, to, to, to like... He, he, and they were, they were extremely brag about it. You know, everyone has to talk to me before they enter the United Kingdom and deliver gas here. Wow. So that does not exist today. Um, so I'd done that and I met a chick in LAX airport. I was bored, two hour layover. And I said, I got to go find a girl to talk to. I was very single at the time. And, um, she was in the payments industry. This is in 2005, 2006. So I didn't come straight to digital. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I built a payments company called Chargebacks 911. Um, started playing around with how ad spin works. Because I wanted to, yeah. you remember I talked about, hey, I need to know the production from the well all the way. Well, when I start to study something, I, I wanted to understand payments. <clears throat> because I, I, I saw similar patterns and payments um i saw what you guys are doing uh whether it's content or t-shirts 
Mm -hmm. um, I saw this is another commodity play. And I do believe that's what's happening here. We are commoditizing everything. In 2007, I remember going back to my partner and said, we are going to commoditize planet Earth now. And it comes from a thesis that I have about when you introduce transparency into a market, remember the opacity? Yeah. There's always hidden margins. If that's true, when you introduce transparency in the market, and that's what commodity markets do, transparency always leads to commoditization. It's the transparency that starts first. Then you lead to commoditization. What does that mean? It means that just because you're a brand, you don't get a premium. Okay, just because you stick a label around something and mm. do some advertising, Disney, Disney will not get a premium in the future. They won't. The why? For their specific content, unique, one of a kind, awesome. Okay, right. but if it's if they're selling a doll that's made in China, and they put a little logo on Disney, it's not really unique. Okay, and Disney may not be the best example because they have the mickey mouse they have real content sure but there's plenty of direct to consumer brands that are literally all white labeled and they're just different so, stickers so. as look, look i met a guy in vegas and, and he told me he was selling 600 t-shirts a day okay and i thought that was impressive 600 t-shirts yeah uh, i didn't like the t-shirt side but i said what are you selling for 89 bucks really and i thought 600 t how long have you been doing this in three years what's your top sale thousand What's your bottom sale? 300 a day. I'm like, you've been selling 600 t-shirts a day for three years. Who are you stealing demand from? See, it's so, <laughs> so clear to me. I'm like, there's no way everybody can buy infinite numbers of t-shirts, man, yeah. at 89 bucks, right? So, you know, I was like, dude, they're taking the load from Walmart, yeah, from Costco, from Walgreens, from all, Penny's, Perry's, Marshall, Tucker, whoever, right? Yeah. Nord's, yeah. And look what's happened. These retailers have gotten destroyed, man, because they're not really, they're not product producers. They're labelers. Right, right. They brand something and put it like, you know, I, I don't know where this was made. Well, this, <laughs> um, and they stick a label on it. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure this was made in China. It's nice, but mm. uh, do I need to pay 300 bucks for the name? And so that transparency <clears throat> leads to commoditization. And commoditization is really about increased volume at a massively compressed margin, right? And legacy players hate that, especially public companies that are legacy players because they're reporting to 22-year-old kids right. every quarter. First off, trying to run a multi-billion dollar company on quarterly earnings or even a small company is insanity. <laughs> it is total insanity. It's not, imagine trying to get married and you're going to go to your wife and go, hey, we're going to do metrics every quarter. And, our, if, and, <laughs> and we're going to fuck, we're going to fuck. Our metrics always have to be going up. There is a point where you cannot fuck your wife anymore. I mean, <laughs> and you just get to a point where it, it's not like you can't grow forever. Yeah. Gro growth, total growth forever is ridiculous. It never works. I see that a lot, especially in the e-commerce space. They, they think the the ROAS of the ads are, because we've ran a lot of e-commerce brands in the, in the skincare space, and they're stealing from L'Oreal and all these different big content. Yeah, right. it's the same product. Yeah, it's the see, same thing. What the FTC, Visa, Mascore, don't understand. Dude, I can go to Switzerland and buy the exact same product of L'Oreal and do it for about 20% of what they do it for. Because I'm not, I don't have any all those marketing costs. Mm-hmm. Right, I don't have that legacy, all the lawyers, all the legal. And when there's 10,000, this is what I love about this and why I support so many people. Mm -hmm. People go, well, why are you doing this? Because we're gonna destroy mainstream media. Okay. Oh yeah. This is yeah. death by a thousand cuts. And so people were, I was at a show last night, and people were like, well, you know, this guy's a podcaster. He's not really a good guy. I said, they're all good, dude. They're all good. I don't even care if they're smoke and crack. They're all good because this transparency, the, the consumer will pick the winners. Mm -hmm. The guys with content will do extremely well. The guys blowing a bunch of bullshit out there, they're going to get smoked off the planet. But in the meantime, who did we really destroy? We destroyed Anderson Cooper, Don Lemon, and all these talking heads who, like guys, like I don't even know why you listen to them. They literally have no content. Yeah. When I realized... Oh shit, I have 60 years of content, man. 
Like, and you want it. Like you're really wanting it, right? Like you don't have all those books up there for no reason. I mean, it's, oh, yeah. some of them look like they've even been read, right? <laughs> so, uh, I mean, most of them do. So uh, I think I just see this journey through payments. Um, I built a half a billion dollar business on a problem that should not even exist. Mm. Did it in 10 years in an industry, another industry that was very, very old. Credit card payments industry is 52 years old. It took Visa and MasterCard. You talked about scaling. Right. This, this, the, the crypto world has no idea about scaling. Hey, it's really depressing to hear some of the stuff out of the crypto people like, you know, adoption's going to happen from the bottom. But it never happens from the bottom. No. It happens from institutions. You cannot like it if you want, but it's not happening from Africa, man. It's going to happen because Black, uh, BlackRock, big wealthy families come into here, Fidelity's in it everybody's in it. You can't start saying, well, no, no, we don't like those guys. And that's like, that's crazy, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the payments industry took 52 years, two companies, Visa, MasterCard, took 52 years to get all those credit cards in your pocket. So adoption is very, very hard, Dave. Okay, this, these are companies that have ads on every major football field, every soccer pitch, Every rugby pits, mm. every everything. They've been marketing for billions of dollars, 50 years to get seven credit cards in the pocket. They have the distribution. They have all the different rails. They have the client base. They have all that stuff to easily suck up that market. And it took five decades. Okay, and, and this is my point to the crypto guys. You're not disrupting that quickly mm -hmm. it, 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 because it, there's too many moving pieces. There's so much vested interest. Um. And, but that business, when I started to see that that the, the payments industry is a there's a plumbing problem. It's they they call it fraud, but it's actually a plumbing problem. And it's yeah. um, uh, most people and there are very few banks really in the payments. System. There's two or three banks. Visa and Mastercard are not banks. In fact, I would say Visa and Mastercard are vendors and nothing else. They take zero risk. Uh, make a really healthy clip. They make a 51% net operating margin. Visa does. ExxonMobil, 10. Visa, 51%. ExxonMobil, 10. Whose product is more valuable? ExxonMobil. Okay, like, like if your plastic melts in the sun, like, are you going to, like, die? I don't think so. If, if this oil doesn't show up to that hospital, I'm pretty sure, you know, you're going to not walk out of the hospital. Mm -hmm. It's staggering, okay? Okay, it, it, if... ExxonMobil had a 51% net operating margin. There'd be people rioting in the streets right now. Yeah. Okay. Rioting in the streets. But the credit cards, because you could choose not to use this fuel. You can. You don't have to get in a car. You can use a, a, a bicycle or whatever. Mm -hmm. Everyone uses the credit card. I mean, how many punks do you know go to the ATM? Why would you pay $3.50 to someone you don't even know to get 100 bucks out? Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, it, it's bizarre to make. Like it does, the money doesn't even weigh anything. <laughs> Y'all are carrying your little vapes around. I mean, Three hundred bucks weighs less than your vapor. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in seeing all the like that, we could build a business thirty-five years into the payment industry, right? That was that big. Three hundred employed, three hundred people, and then eight competitors came up and copied us. Mm. Uh, there's been, I think, $2 billion for companies like this. We did that without debt. We did it without outside equity. It was all ours. Oh, wow. Um, started getting really bored six years ago, and that's what happens to me. Once I, once I see where the market's going, I get a little bored, and I started studying blockchain and, and Bitcoin. I bought Bitcoin back 16 or 18, I think 18 and I, st I looked at it at 16, threw it out. And I'm like, too many idiots. Uh, the noise was too much. Which today, I say that is, I was just with a really w wealthy family. Mm -hmm. I think the carnival stuff is actually good for wealthy people like me. Uh, my message to everyone is, hey, that's keeping the price down. Okay, that is awesome. You mm -hmm. just got to you got to see through the noise. You you can't listen to too much of this. I mean, you can't. You got to remember like. The whiskey industry was, you know, produced on crime. It was violation of federal laws mm. all over the place. People were killed. 
and people are still drinking today. Nobody's blaming the Kennedys, and nobody's even talking about it. Yeah. You talk about the whole Silk Road thing. Like every industry is developed on the edges. The credit card industry was built on pornography, adult, gaming, and gambling. Yeah, that, that's yeah. how yeah. we are where we are in the payments industry. And if you notice what's happened, we went from having a credit card that I would share with you mm -hmm. to now we're online now. Yeah, it's all through our iPhones or it's just through it's, an address it's, it's or not. It's a non interactive. Wow, it's starting to sound like a commodity. It's a non-interactive experience between two human beings. We're literally ch changing contracts, but we don't know each other. There's no relationship. Why did I come here versus us not doing that on Zoom? We're going to have a different experience. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So when you see this much change going on, all you have to do is open your eyes and go, wow, media is being disrupted. Payments industry is not working well. Um, oil's moving all over the place. All these con OPEC is falling apart. NATO right. is falling apart. The European Union is falling apart. Okay, like they're, they're, they're like so. For me, I love looking at the whole world. Mm -hmm. uh, look at history. All in bets. Like that's what I do. I only have three or four deals now. I'm like I'm not mm. people want me to invest. I don't. I don't do a lot of investments. I like put money into my own company or into something. Or people that I, I, hey, there's a monster opportunity here. It's going to take me four or five years to work through it. But I've been doing it long enough to know. I know how the client's going to behave because they're all really super big clients. It's mm. either Exxon Mobil or Ernst & Young or Visa or MasterCard. They behave a certain way. And, and so you just have to manage through the time it takes. It's, it sure. takes a lot of time. They resist change yeah and even even banks they've been adopting blockchain since 2015 2016 that, that's when i got involved in uh in crypto was a little bit back then so i sounded like boy crying wolf or whatever saying yeah. all this stuff about blockchain and that they have these patents being developed and da, 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 da. um but it's been about eight years since that's even been talked about at least when i was talking about it and it's been in development for decades now um so when, when you look at prices moving when you see that exchange in the short term for bitcoin what does that indicate to you, because you, you look at price in a very, very unique way. I watched your podcast with Vivek, and you were talking about how price can also be the constraint to make the end user more efficient. If energy is priced a certain way, it makes everything more efficient than it does. So um, wh what is it that uh, you see with price specifically in Bitcoin um, that maybe you don't hear with spaces and all that stuff? People saying, oh, it's going to go to 150K or whatever the case is. Like, what is that indicating to you? Um, when you see price action and price movement in the asset overall? Uh, well, one, I think price, uh, I am the perfect capitalist, okay? Like, I, I believe that if you let the markets move, mm -hmm. if you let the mar if you do not interfere with the markets and, and you don't interfere, like you don't save people, you, the price is the king. It, it will solve every, every, every problem price does it mm. the, so my point to vivek was hey look uh 300 crude oil um we stop war there's no reason to have war everybody's making a shitload of money mm -hmm. 300 crude allows for all the solar all the windy greeny people which by the way you guys <laughs> will never make this work yeah i'm not for it you will not make it work without 300 crude oil this is my point Okay, idiots in the green movement, like idiots, they just don't, when I say idiots, I mean, hey, look, you're stupid. You, you, you're you ignorant. It'd be like me walking into a high stakes cash game in, in the dirty part of Miami, man, and thinking I'm going to make it out alive. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, the, but these people coming in these markets, they go, we need subsidies from the U.S. government to make a good idea work. Dude, if it was a good idea, you it would work. need subsidy. The problem is crude oil at $60, nobody in solar can make any money. So then you have to do the subsidy. So I'm the, mm. sitting there with Vivek, said $300 crude oil, dude. It takes gasoline to $7 to $8, $10. We stop driving to the grocery store for a pack of cigarettes. Okay. You, you, like people waste too much. You start turning off your lights. Okay. I guarantee you, you do not value electricity because you didn't turn your computers off last night. No, so it's no. price wrong. It's price wrong. If you don't turn your shit off, would you leave your Range Rover running all day long to come to come to an empty tank? 
and a dead battery, no. So I have never not been able to debate within four minutes anyone on this planet that electricity, natural gas, gasoline, oil is too cheap. For sure too cheap. For mm. t- sure too cheap here because we waste the crap out of it. Um, so if you don't go to war, and you don't, then you don't have subsidies. Right. And I aren't paying taxes for subsidies. Go, go build all the green shit you want, man. Yeah. Okay? And they'll make good margin for a little while. And then four years from now, we will have so much energy on this planet. That we will be, and then there will be no $300 crude oil. There'll mm. be whatever the market price is for that energy, right? Um, so that's, to me, like if you can do that with a, a, a product, that defines whether we are first, second, or third world nation. He who has the most energy, not the cheapest, he who has the most energy wins the game. Okay, the most dense fossil fuel energy source on the planet, he who has the most, and he who has the most at the best price really, really wins the game, which leads Mm. us to crypto. Like this has been a really interesting journey for me because I did not expect to go from energy. I never thought when i walk away from a business dude like mm. it's literally like me cutting something though dude all, all the names and contacts i keep 10 of them don't care about any i'm, I'm done right and then i move in this other space i'm like man, i've seen this before so we moved to crypto and we got miners you know talking about seven cents a kilowatt and everybody's my only my only people that made money in mining are the people that steal electricity Mm. at 300 bucks you can't how did, how did they mine it 300 bucks yeah the electricity prices haven't changed in eight years so what, yeah right. so what, what do you think would happen if because uh, i got one of your spaces you're saying what would cause entrance to bitcoin or any you know what what would be that factor what, what would be something that made damages short term or whatever to slow it down i think i think everything you could possibly have done in this industry has already been done to slow it down even if energy Char- prices went up character for all the miners. Character, uh, substance, crimes, uh, three banks went down. You've had Binance basically beheaded, um, which I don't even know how that worked. I mean, this guy's not even a U.S. citizen. The DOJ is out of control. I mean, like, wow. What kind of, what happened to get a deal like that done in seven days? Yeah, that's pretty intense. <laughs> yeah, we well, there's some, we have some, dirt on our hands for that trade to happen that quick that's very unusual Mm -hmm. having said that jp morgan's paid 113 billion dollars in fines over the last 20 years yeah ridiculous okay Uh, like yeah you you keep getting fined like that hey why don't you just throw the people in jail dude like it clearly the fines are not working every year they get a fine for illegal activities man i mean illegal activity Mm -hmm. setting up the gold price and Moving yeah, the, yeah. FX around. These are these are the problems with lack of transparency, because, and this is important for you, your team to know. Like in markets as big as crypto, as big as FX, as big as crude oil, there are three or four men, dude, who run these markets. Okay, and I speak from like total experience. Yeah, okay? there are three or four people running every market on the planet. And they're not the same people. Uh, they're, like when I like I have run markets, like literally uh, that market is not going to operate un- when, until Gary shows up. Wow. Like the, they're calling me. Hey, man, when are you going to be at the office? W- what's the deal? Nobody's going to trade unless you show up, dude. Because I was the stimulus, right? I would set the prices. Mm-hmm. And that happens in real markets. People just don't understand the complexity of who prices a market. Um. So I don't think anything can hurt Bitcoin. Nothing. Uh, well, a three or four stage EMP attack is about the global EMP attack is about the only thing that's going to hurt Bitcoin and stupid me. Um, the problem is not only will it hurt Bitcoin, but it'll hurt credit cards, ACH, wire. There will be no transaction of anything. So to compare Bitcoin with plastic and to say, well, you're not ha- the only access you're not going to have is to this right here, the money. If you got the money in your pocket, 
Mm. Awesome. But all these little digits, they're not going to work. So why do I care about that? I don't care. I cannot invest like that and go, wow, there's going to be an EMP. Dude, if yeah. there's an EMP, I'm loading my Glock. I'm getting my money. There's a bigger problem. There's a much bigger <laughs> problem, okay? Um, so if that's my biggest risk, I mean, my biggest risk if I invest in real estate in, in uh, California is, wow, I could lose this in an earthquake. And, you know, my brother and other people go, oh, yeah, you can insure it. You can insure it, dude, but it takes years to get the money back. Okay? Mm-hmm. And they're negotiating constantly. And by the way, that insurance company will be bankrupt. Be totally bankrupt. So I'm not even sure these insurance policies. I mean, if all of San Francisco just got wiped out with an earthquake. Right. So I look at Bitcoin and go, hmm, does really well in war. It's already proven to do well in war. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you're a U- Ukrainian citizen. Um, I'm pretty sure you kind of like Bitcoin, right? Uh, while the while the uh, 23-year-old mother who's got two kids leaving the Ukraine, being forced into the Eurozone. Well, I don't know what they're going to do with 22 million immigrants. Dude, 22 million mommies and children are moving into 16 countries in Europe. And they're broke already. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Not sure how that's going to work, but I'm sure they, uh, like the Middle Eastern people, uh, all the Saudi money that moved into central London, 48% of central London, central London, I mean, like the cat daddy of London mm-hmm. is owned by foreigners. Okay. Really? There are no English people there that can buy Chelsea anymore. No, no, they're, they're, and they're empty. Why? Because the Saudi money knows that one day there is a great possibility that the king will say, you, all your shit's gone, go to jail, get beheaded, whatever. So what they do is they take ten, hundred, a billion dollars, move it into Hyde Park, stick it into a twenty million pound home, pay forty or sixty million for it, mm-hmm. and move away, go away. They're not living in the homes. They have butlers. They have they have cleaners. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> there is no one living there. That is a foreign money deployment play to get out of the sovereign risk environment. Yeah, where they don't really care. They just want the money outside the system. Well, you don't need to go buy a building anymore. You can push it into Bitcoin. Uh, has no maintenance, no taxes. You're not going to get a tax bill every year mm-hmm. unless you liquidate it. Right. It doesn't require plumbing. Doesn't require power. Not every day, right? Like this is doesn't require much of anything. It has no CEO. See, this, this is really interesting, right? Like, uh, people go, hey, I'm going to buy into Ethereum. I'm saying, well, I don't understand why I do. Well, what kind of jackson are you trying to get? What, like, how jacked do you need to get? Bitcoin has gone up, effective at least last night, 598% in five years. It's not a short period of time. Mm-hmm. I've removed all the, f- the first eight years because I didn't think the volume or the price was relevant. So right. Just since 2018, we have a 600% increase uh, with a, a bunch of this. But people that have this in their 401k don't look at the chart every day. So it's either, is this a long-term hold or is it a short-term hold? If right. it's a sh- long-term hold, you should be continuing to add if this trend you think increases and as the world falls apart it is everything's like we are waking up to oh my god there's change here i mean you have people on spaces you have tucker carlson who is to completely disrupted mainstream media. joe rogan is sure. providing education the education system screwed up we have digital formatting to be able to access eight billion people and it's also happens to have a digital currency which every government in the world is agreeing hey we're going to digital currencies well we're already there they're they're actually lying to you they're already there what we don't have is a public blockchain Hmm. we don't have where all that money's being made and there's seven trillion y'all can't even write that number correctly the first time no shame to you just nobody's ever done it seven trillion dollars a year in fees in the finance ACH fees wire fees penalties this is a little late fee. Lady, la- lady uh, the bank knows the lady gets paid on Wednesday. Her Netflix account for $8.95 pops off on Tuesday. The bank knows 
she's getting paid on Wednesday, they charge her $15 for insufficient funds. And $15 on an $8 charge. Yeah, that's ridiculous. That's 140% interest like, for one day. And they know the money's showing up, okay? Like, like this, this will, get, digital, the true digital nature of Bitcoin, it's going to remove all of those losses. We're, the people are being stole from. Mm-hmm. And they don't, it's not just the deflation. It, it's literally some of the fees. It's not just the value of the dollar is getting crushed. The truth is the value of the human is being destroyed. And, and, and you know, just to stick your nose into Netflix and just live there all day is not value. It's not the quality of life. Right. Right. So um, I don't know that anything can hurt Bitcoin. Really, I, I know that's a pro- very profound comment, but I think the most damage that we could have possibly done has been done. Interesting. I, I, I mean, catastrophically, dude. You would never build a business this way, and, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. No the way. marketing is colossally bad, and I say that quite frequently. And, and none of the pioneers, the early starters, who I think are becoming more of a problem actually to the community than they are a solution. I have been saying for a couple of years, man, market, you got sales and marketing, horrible. And then I, I had to realize by myself, no kidding, it's horrible. There is no marketing department. Right. Now that's the good news. Okay. Because if they want to go hammer Ethereum, there is a person they can contact. Okay. And he owns most of it. So like, I, what did they do to guy Binance? Hey, we got your name, dude. Yeah. Okay. Make that phone call to Bitcoin. This is why I don't understand why you guys are playing with Dogecoins. And unless you were so stacked up with Bitcoin, like you have Bitcoin flowing out of your ears, man. You got yeah. diarrhea in the morning. You got so much. You're bloated on Bitcoin and you're wealthy. You made the right decisions and you got, okay, I'm going to put a million dollars on Dogecoin. If you don't look at it that way, would I invest a million dollars in Dogecoin? No. For the same reason the guy didn't spend by a million dollars on $3 Bitcoin. Yeah. Because he's like, I'm not buying that million. I'm not going all in. So to spend a thousand bucks and hope your coin goes up 300%, what are you going to make? You know, I mean, I, I know all these people talk about chasing the dragon and all these people that made money, but can you show me three people who walked away with stacks of cash? Can you? Because I, I don't see these guys. Well, they're 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 and, in hiding, or they're one time, but wonders. Yeah, a lot of them go in hiding. They go travel around the world and everything because they don't want to be traced. Yeah, cool. I mean, and to your point, like that that's good happening. So, in the so they get out. Much. They're they're no longer a player though. Yeah, and and those coins they can hold them, they can hoard them. Um, you know what frustrates me is that we talk about oh, there's a lot of manipulation. The Black Rocks manipulating the block. I'm like, you guys have been manipulating this market for 14 years now. The whales mm-hmm. have been moving this market around for years, okay, for years. So it, I don't like the hypocrisy of it. Other than that, there is nothing that can stop Bitcoin. The, the, there are going to be a lot of people who go broke. Don't get me wrong. Sure. Uh, many of them will be watching your podcast. Many of them will be in this age bracket of 18 to 48 and chasing these like a friend of mine is really into cordano right cordano's moved from 40 yeah. to 51 in about a week okay it's it's, it's up 11 cents on 40 okay it's 25 percent uh it like it, is that the play i, I saw bitcoin go up 15 percent one day so is is Cordano going to catch up? When do you ever get out of Cordano? See, see what I love about Bitcoin? I don't have to have a terminal event. Yeah, I can hold it. It is the it is the cheapest long dated call option that has no time decay. This is the way I have always seen Bitcoin. It's the greatest long dated non decay option I've ever seen in my life. That's such an interesting perspective because I know most people that come into crypto, they they go the maximalist route. They're like, oh, it's the, the debasement hedge or it is uh, it's screw you to the government or whatever. All those different <clears throat> ideologies that are not even connected to markets, that are not connected to how you see the value exchange of the pipeline that we were talking about earlier. It's just so distorted. And that's why I think your your perspective on this is so 
not only needed, but it's also so valuable. And I love how you've entered into the space to share education on it. Cause it's just like, wake up guys. You guys are in this, you're at a vantage point of maybe two feet. I'm coming in from hundred, 200, 300 feet or whatever to give you guys the altitude of what I see. And I love that. Yeah. I love that. Well, I think, I think the other thing is that sometimes maybe people aren't asking the right questions or they're not listening really well. But if you notice the, the, uh, what type of people are becoming important in the space? Um, it's really clear to me that uh, much of the legacy finance, what this industry call, calls the trade fi people, mm-hmm. that are coming in. I can, I hear these, see these notes. Oh, he's a trade fi guy, you know, blah blah. Um, I'm I'm gonna I'm pretty sure that it's us that's putting the real money into the game. We're the ones with, you know, five hundred Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when you see hear these people on Twitter. You know, the older guys that you really listen to. Yeah. Like they're very articulate. They're consistent. You may not even understand some of what they're saying um, versus they all, the, the, I mean, I heard some stuff this morning. I'm like, my God, man, you should have kept your mouth shut like about 30 seconds ago, right? Um, just it, it, it shows you how much they don't know. Um, I remember Grant going on the space with me one day and he said, Hey bro, how, how, how many Bitcoin do you have? He was asking an expert mm. and the guy wouldn't answer the question. And he looked, Grant looked at me and said, how many do you have? I told him. And the reason he was asking the question was like, I need to know what your position is. Are you talking from a $12 position or are you talking from, Hey, you have an allocation of 80%. And if you're wrong, your family's going to go broke. Yeah. Yeah. That's my position. My family will go broke. My kids will end up with nothing. And I'm okay with that because that's exactly the way Grant and I grew up anyway. Yeah, yeah. So I'm actually more scared than I'm right. That if I'm right, um, they're going to have a much, much bigger. That's why I like Trump. Trump's one of the only guys I've ever known that was given money that didn't turn into a crackhead. Yeah, he made he made a huge empire about it for sure. Media personality, multiple real estate, you know, buildings all over the world. Yeah, he, um, he disrupted spaces and, yeah. and people. Oh, he he was involved with the mob. He was in New York for forty years. Okay, everyone's been involved with the mob if you've been in New York for forty years. It's kind of the same thing with crypto too. Like at some point, if you're early on enough, like you're gonna get bitcoins from something that was traced to something. Like you're just in the scene. It's gonna happen. Yeah, and the, those people will, like, the regulators aren't done with finding those people. So, like, you, you don't really want to do anything illegal in Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. It, it, it is, I mean, I own a company that, that does this, um, you know, that tracks, traces, monetizes, un- financial, p- places financial context on every trade. Um, there is no such thing as Monero going to hide you. Like it can hide you, but you know, there's a way to backtrace everything Mm -hmm. and it's already happening. So I, I would, uh, I don't know where this anonymity thing came from. I mean, I know in the white paper, sure. You and I can do a trade together, but in order to get adoption, it's not going to be peer to peer. It's going to be peer exchange, peer to peer. Um, I mean, I know a lot of people that own gold. They've never traded gold with an, as a retail play. Oh, okay. I have literally given people gold in exchange for a service. Well, in fact, with my, the CEO of Note 40, he said, I have never seen, you're a freak show, dude. We're up <laughs> at a, a thing over a weekend. We went to Arizona. Uh-huh. And I got a sense of this cat's personality. The guy that was providing the service, he was ex-military, hates the government. And I said, you're a gold guy, huh? He said, oh, yeah. I said, you're a Bitcoin. No, I don't understand Bitcoin. I said, can I pay you in gold for this? And he's like, for sure, dude. I knew he would prefer gold. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did a trade. Like, no one can stop that trade. You can make it illegal if you want. Mm -hmm. But they try to make marijuana illegal. And I saw people, there's just as many people smoking it when it's legal versus illegal. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, they try to make prostitution illegal. It's all, what's only fans <laughs> insane, man. I don't know what that you call that, but like, I don't, I think, you know, somewhere in there, 
Yeah, it's in the category for sure, for sure. But I think what's interesting too is you, you talked about a little bit like the regulatory capture that comes in. They're just trying to suck up that market and, and take those fees, take extra taxes and stuff like that. So how do you see with the regulation coming in now and bigger players getting in now, trying to capture either exchange volume? I know BlackRock and the Fidelity are going to do it because they have the ETFs, but how do you see that playing a factor into how uh, retailers or even the big boys are making decisions when purchasing Bitcoin? Is it just going to be through these ETFs? Just well, so they can put well, derivatives on it, or is it just going to be, is it going to lose some of that uh, hodl culture, if you will, of offline storage and getting things off of the, the central system? I don't think we've seen uh, what real players are going to do. Mm-hmm. I'm really certain they're not going to hold them in their own wallets. They're going to keep it on exchange. Look, the exchange has been annoyed at, man. This is what happens, okay? Mm-hmm. They regulate the bad guys, they pick a winner, and they have anointed Coinbase. And the pioneer guys at, and Bitcoin don't want to admit this, but one, you had the opportunity to regulate yourself. You didn't. And so you're going to get regulated. And you're going to get regulated more harshly and with greater discernment than, and probably over the top, had you just done the right thing, mm-hmm. which is, hey, don't blame other markets and then repeat exactly the same thing you're they're doing. Mm-hmm. Big money. There are 406,000 ultra wealthy families on this planet. $50 million in liquid cash or more. Mm. Many of them are much, much more. If 406,000 families were to deploy um, $2.5 million one time, no multiple years. Just pick any year. You can do it over 10 years. You could do it tomorrow morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, $2.5 million for most families is, I think, a reasonable number. You could reduce and take a zero off and say it's only 250 mm-hmm. I will tell you, most families will not do a deal for 200000 because they have a K-1 to fill out. Paperwork. It's like, dude, if I'm going to do all, like I will not even do a deal anymore for fifty to hundred grand. I don't want the K ones. Mm-hmm. I don't want all. The, I got a buddy of mine's got gets eighty nine K ones. Why don't you just invest in one deal? Yeah. Right. Yeah. My thesis is these people will move in for five years. There's no trading. They're going to treat this just like they do all their other stuff, man. Real estate. Ten years. Go sign up a grant for one of his real estate deal. Minimum ten years, and he has a right to roll it into another ten. Okay? Right. These are going to be five-year funds. They're going to fill in. They're going to fill in that piece where, like, if it's eight and ten years up here, right? Wow, they have a new product they can buy with a five-year window. They'll review it, and then they'll make a decision. Well, we're going to now dump our position, or we're going to extend it. You know, continue to add as they get more comfortable. I think the allocation that most people on Wall Street has assumed is half a percent to three percent. That is absolutely incorrect. Yeah, that's so low. It's going to be way bigger. Hey, at one percent, it takes Bitcoin to 150 grand. That actually, my greatest concern is liquidity with Bitcoin. Mm. It is my greatest concern. I hope I'm wrong, but. <clears throat> It, 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 let's get back to the 406,000 families. Yeah, yeah. Now, some of these are going to do $50 million. They're not going to do two and a half. Okay? They're going to do $25 million wedges. That would require, at today's price, 34 million Bitcoin. A two and a half million dollar deployment into Bitcoin from 406,000 families is 34, 33 million Bitcoin. There's 60 million millionaires. If they do a deployment of $2,500, man, uh-huh. it's four and a half million. Okay, so there is not enough supply. Okay, this is a mm. very unique product. And when families realize, like I'm spending a lot of time with family offices right now, and people are going, hey, why are you trying, why are you helping these people? You don't, you, I'm not even trying to raise money from them on Node 40. Mm hmm. And my answer is, hey, look, I'm trying to survey to figure out how many people have invested in this because I don't think anyone's invested in it. My brother, it does not have an investment in Bitcoin. 
He says he does, but he does not. He didn't pay for Bitcoin. Mm. You got to pay for Bitcoin, okay, to have an investment. He received it as a part of a sale. He would never have taken it otherwise. And he's a good indicator of, as this price moves, I mean, he was teasing me at 30. <laughs> he was teasing me at 30,000, going, hey, it couldn't hold 30. I'm like, bro, that was one hour. It test. Do you understand? Markets get tested, right? Mm -hmm. And then it shot up to thirty three, and now it's at forty seven. And he will dig dig his heels in now because he needs to be right. He's got a big real estate thing, and he's not going to go broke. People are like, "Well, your brother should do something." My brother doesn't have to do shit, man. Right? He doesn't care if he misses this. It's not going to end his life. Many families it won't end their life. So what do you have to do? You have to look at these families. And go, listen, you own land. You own oil, you own this, and then you got Bitcoin over here. We're going to teach you what real finite product is because no one on this planet has ever had a finite experience except you and me. Like, mm -hmm. uh, like, and we devalue that too. We don't actually value our own uniqueness as human beings. Like, there is only one of me. All right. For sure. Only one of me. Uh, and there's only the difference is Bitcoin's going to outlive me. It doesn't have decay. Mm -hmm. Now, you asked me a question on the option thing. Let, let's assume that one day we're at uh, $4 trillion. That's a $200,000, yeah, $200,000 Bitcoin price. No worries. But, but so on this $200,000, because we're looking at Bitcoin as, uh, I'm going to kind of throw an idea out there to you, the value that I see in it. Mm -hmm. Um, at three, at two hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin, what's a thirty five thousand dollar coin? If you're physically holding it, and in three years, Bitcoin every month is trading at around two hundred grand. What is a call option worth? In the money call option, two hundred grand, two hundred grand. You can pull my bit physical. I am offering physical wallet to wallet. What is your price for a call option in the money at two hundred grand? They're like, you know what those are going to be? They're, you're going to get paid ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month. Okay, you cannot do this with oil. You can't do it. You can do it with a piece of paper, but it's a piece of paper. Uh -huh. This is like, I think it's going to have so many capacities to produce yield without any third party credit risk. Mm. Right? Like, you're going to yeah. have to pay me for the option. Like, for instance, what would a $50,000 call option be January 15 for you? Okay. Quite a bit. Yeah. I, I, I'll price it right now. Like, I'm not I'm not putting it into a model, but you look at it. I had this exercise the other night with somebody. I said, we're on, you know, some talk show or something. I said, hey, man, like, uh, it's 30, $40,000 call option. It was, I think, 38. What would you pay for that? I said, well, I don't know how to price that. I said, I'll pay you two grand. He said, well, I'll pay you 1000 I said, well, I'll pay you 2500 right now. Okay, so I'm at 2500 but I'm not offering it. Like, I'm a bit. Uh -huh. I have no offer for you. Okay, because I think this thing could rip your face off, dude. I think it could rip your entire, you know, skeletal. Like, it'd be a predatory moment. You know, mm -hmm. the Arnold Schwarzenegger, we just lift up the entire carcass. Yeah. Um, no one, dude, no one's seen this kind of market before. Um. The energy traders that are coming into mining, they're going to arb, arbitrage the absolute fuck out of power prices and money. They are they're not going to be like Mr. Pure Miner. Uh -huh. They don't care. I mean, I'm talking to one of them right now. Guess where he came from? The Enron Dynagy era. Oh, okay. 60-year-old guy, been in markets. He Now, he's building mining on... A whole arbitrage. It's not about the price of Bitcoin. Mm, interesting. Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, he'll be selling options, in-day options. Um, it's truly fascinating. I mean, and, and to be able to, like, be at ground level. I think this is ground level. What happened 15 years before this? I, I think that it, you didn't even need to participate back then mm -hmm. to be relevant. And you can almost tell by the people that are, the adults are getting ready to take over this market. Like, and you can see you can see people showing up. And then you should ask, why are all the gray hair guys showing up? Uh, why are all the guys with 30 and 40 years experience? I mean, mm -hmm. these are some not dumb guys. Um, 
I, I do not consider myself a dumb guy. I would, you know, I've done this so many times now. Like, this is the cool thing. I'm old enough now. I've had enough experience. I can make a monster, monster allocation uh, to this space. But I don't do it to, like, I'm talking about life changing, mm-hmm. altering. Right? Either way, to if I'm wrong, it's gonna be life altering. <laughs> If I'm right, it's going to be life altering. Mm-hmm. Um, most people won't do it that way. Right. But my my only advice to your community is, hey, if you're going to do something like that, get completely stuffed with Bitcoin and be in the money and then take some money on the side. Do not commingle this money, okay? Because mm-hmm. as soon as you commingle it, you're a junkie. You're going to turn your crown into a piece of shit over here because you're going to try and solve a problem when your dogecoin gets collapsed and but have a little gambling book if you're a junkie go have a little gambling mm-hmm. book i mean cool right but don't commingle it with the bitcoin position gotcha and have a full have a write down your hey i am marrying this bitcoin for the next five years and i am not going to commit adultery right this is your vision this is your relationship with this asset class and then this stuff over here, these are my date girls on Saturday night. When I'm my auntie, I'm going to play around with them. <laughs> that's exactly the way you should look at it. Right? Okay. Because that's not lasting. We know these coins are not going to survive. 98, 99.8% will die valued at zero. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 98% of all businesses go, go away. Okay. So, um, and it, if you have a massive amount of investments that give you access to a finite product with no CEO. And I'd be investing in that stuff. I just don't think you can find it. Yeah. Like name me one. And that's what anyone, anything finite, no CEO to knock down, no CEO to serve papers to no board to talk to nobody's, nobody's door to knock on no email address. BTC at BTC. Good luck. And that's very, very unique, dude. And, and like, you know, we know, we know that media is controlling their people. But they do it through a payroll, mm-hmm. a check, or photographs. Uh, CEOs or CEOs of public companies do what they're told to do. And when 17 other CEOs are all telling fibs on their quarterly earnings, the, the last guy that was honest will become dishonest. He'll do the same thing. He'll justify, well, everybody does it this way. Mm. Um, so I, I have never seen a product like this, you know, and it, so it's it's hard not to become really excited about something yeah. that's, um, you know, that you can look at and go, hey, I'm going to stick a monster amount of my energy into this, whether it's time, money, or both. Uh, and if you see the people, if you really examine the people that have come in that you admire, they are all in. Yeah. I mean, they're intensely focused on the space, whether they're, they don't, you don't have to just do Bitcoin. I mean, you could buy companies here, man. Mm -hmm. You can invest in companies. You can get a job in this, in this industry. That's what I would do. If I'm not 90% happy with the job I have, I immediately go, Hey, I'm going to start looking for a job in the digital asset industry. Get around some really smart people. I said, smart, good luck, Mm -hmm. smart and honest. And take three, four years and call it mentorship. And then in four years, you will be one of the most significant players in the entire industry. That People miss that opportunity. Like, mm-hmm. I am going to be a name in this industry before it's done. I will know everybody before it's done. I'm not in a rush. I'm having lunch with Tony Vey, uh next, next week. I, I, I'm not in a rush to meet all these guys. Like, mm-hmm. It'll happen. The cool thing is you can get to everybody. Yeah. And to Perro, Mark Isco, anybody, anyone, the, the CEO of NIDIC, like will take the phone call. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's very unusual, man. It does not happen in, like, try to get a meeting with the CEO of Visa. Yeah. They're, they're like kings, okay? They're protected by massive groups of people. Um, this industry is very unique. Uh, like, I actually think I'll be worth a lot more than my brother for a massive amount less less work uh, over this play. They're just missing it. They're they're missing that this is a real estate play. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, what, what are most real estate guys like? Finite supply, location, location, location. You can't have location, location, location and not be, hey, this is finite, right? Right, exactly. Location, location, location is, this is a finite product. Can't get any more of this on Brickle, right? Period. Well, this is, this is that on steroids, man. Mm-hmm. Okay, there's 19 million and you're not going to get the other two any quicker than 140 years. You cannot yeah. accelerate. I cannot. I can go to a well bore in Canada and stick a bunch of water in it, man. Okay. Pressure it, pressure it, pressure it, and accelerate the volume of crude oil. If it's at 60 and the price goes to 100, I can just push as much fucking water down that well bore as possible and then poof, right? I get more production. You cannot do that with Bitcoin. This is the piece most people don't understand. You mm-hmm. cannot accelerate the production of it because we use words like mining. Well, it's not really, it's all been mine, man. Uh-huh. Okay. You're literally having a key to go into the vaults. Those are mine. Okay. But if you, you don't have a vault that can produce these at a accelerated rate, name one product that has that feature. Um, Fruit Loops, it, 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 <laughs> it, if we sold Fruit Loops for $14, I'm pretty sure the Kellogg's company is going to figure out how to make a lot of Fruit Loops. Yeah. We yeah. made 185 billion masks bro 185 billion masks were sold in one year and 80 percent of them were sold Whew. crazy United states we're st- we're idiots man. that's 185 just, billion that's, freaking masks that's why i love the social media stuff and being able to actually like speak out against that stuff <laughs> man that stuff was just propaganda on propaganda and just it, it's crazy to see who opted in for that stuff and who did it man and well, I think it says it, 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 it's a good testimony for everything you're doing because people are really thirsty for information. They're dying for information. So they're dying so much for information, they're listening to stupid information. Um, and it should be another sign of like, wow, how did our education get so twisted that I have to spend 30 minutes of my time in an interview like this talking about the difference between Bitcoin and a piece of shit of a coin, a Gary coin. Okay, like you'd be better off doing a Gary coin because I actually have ethics. Okay, like I'm not taking a three hundred million dollar fucking payday on a token I launch because I'm the CEO. That's ridiculous. Okay, Um, but a Gary coin probably has or a Grant coin. I mean, he's not going to ruin his reputation. So I don't like it. Stuns me that I have to spend time talking about why did you go into Dogecoin and you don't have any Bitcoin? Why did you sell your Bitcoin to go into Dogecoin? Like you really like Elon that much? Because Elon could get shot. Man. Yeah. Okay. Like especially the battles he's fighting right now. Oh my God, man! Uh, I mean, uh, uh, I'd buy I'd buy insurance policy on him. So maybe not shot. Maybe just dies from overworking. Who knows? But I'm pretty sure every every one of his assets are going to go down the the moment he's no longer there. Yeah. Yeah, it's so fascinating, man. And I, I, I think it's just, uh, I think he was, he made a really smart move of acquiring Twitter X or whatever to, to try and fight it. I mean, that's at a mass scale, too. That's a global scale. You have, you know, everything that you're trying to combat, which I think is really interesting. Um, but yeah, to your point, man, Bitcoin is, is finite, has a fixed supply, no CEO. And it's such a rare opportunity because it's, it's really for, I think, for young people, especially the people that watch my stuff, is uh, it's, an, it's an opportunity to be in something early. Because they always typically compare things to back in the day when real estate was a lot cheaper. And that's when we had that whole debt monetization boom because the uh, the U.S. was just printing more and more and more money. And so you can kind of be early in on that, right? It's kind of the same thing where that volume is going to come into Bitcoin. People are going to place it because the the dollar keeps getting devalued and stuff. And so I think it's just really interesting. But Gary, thank you so much for showing up, man. Yeah, man. Um, A lot of great info, a lot of great nuggets. And I'm definitely going to be rewatching this over and over and over. You dropped a lot of great stuff, man. So we'll link your stuff down in the description, guys. Um, Node 40 is his company. He's helping people. Uh, if you want to give the 30 second pitch, but he's helping people in this space really make sure that their books are clean when it comes to their crypto positions. But um, is there anything else that you wanted to add? Yeah, about? yeah. On that, I mean, I, I, the, this is a mistake that people are making. Uh, if you think, what do you think Bitcoin's going to be worth in 10 years? 10 years, it's at least going to be in that 800 to million dollar range for sure. So I would ask, like, just ask yourself, what do you think Bitcoin's going to be worth in five to 10 years? He thinks it's going to be worth 800 to a million. I do not disagree with that. If that is true and you hold 10 Bitcoin or one, 
Don't tell me your position is $33,000. Your position is $1 million, okay? One Bitcoin, if you think mm-hmm. that. Now, why do I say that? Because you guys are mistreating your investment and your assets. You're treating it like it. You keep saying, hey, it's going to be worth a million dollars, but you treat it like a piece of shit. Okay. And what do I mean by that? Like I'm buying hundreds of these for my kids. In 10 years, if we're right, okay, my children are going to have a billion dollar event when they're 30 or 35 years old or half a million billion, okay. or whatever million. It doesn't matter what it is. There are 55,000 tax guy, a uh, $55 billion expansion budget for the IRS. Uh, they're adding somewhere between about 60,000 auditors. We are going to be audited, guys. You are going to be audited. Okay, so what you need to start thinking about, let's just imagine I give Mia an alley, I die, you know? I mean, I cannot control when I'm going to die, okay? Mm. But all of us are going to die. Right. So you hodlers, you're not a forever hodler. You're going to die, man. 46% of us are going to get a divorce that own Bitcoin. You're no longer a hodler. you got a problem this out now. Which, mm-hmm. one, which coins do we move? Do we move the cheap coins? No one's ever thought of this question. It staggers me. I got $8,000 coins. I have $69,000 coins. You and I get a divorce, right? Which coins you want, man? You get, you get 50%. That's what the law in Florida said. Which ones you want? This has happened to me, okay? This is a real oh, deal. Wow. You want the $8,000 ones? Because you probably do. Because you, you look like you could get paid. Well, I'm going to give them to you, okay? And then you're going to pay the tax bill, mm-hmm. okay? Because I want the 69000 See, because I'm looking at it from a tax play. Yeah, yeah. You immediately go, I want the cheap ones. I was hoping she would say, I want the cheap ones. Yeah, because she's okay. thinking the other side of it totally. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then you're like, the lawyer's going to be like, then the lawyers go, hey, man, liquidate them all. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> yeah. I'm not liquidating shit, okay? The only way I liquidate is if you pay all the taxes on the liquidation event, mm. okay? Force me to liquidate. I'm not liquidating. This was not put in. I was down 76%, man. I took a multi, multi, multi million dollar position in the middle of a half a billion dollar fight with a you know ex wife, uh-huh. and I'm sitting in a room. The lawyer, there's nine lawyers in the room. So this, this is the reason I love Node Forty. I took nine lawyers, what should have been an eight hour deposition at eight hundred dollars a person. So ten or twelve of them uh-huh. at eight hundred bucks. <clears throat> was down 76%, tens of millions of dollars of paper losses. All these people are 60 years old. There are judges, and my wife hates me. She's saying I'm an idiot. Of course, I'm going, yeah, you don't want any part of this Bitcoin position. It's going to make me bankrupt. We all know that I'm just an idiot. (laughs) So there was a play there. Yeah, for sure. There was a play there in my divorce. I knew, okay, you guys all think we're crazy. I'm a play that you don't want any of this shit. I'm going to go bust you don't want, like, it was an awesome play, right? Mm-hmm. So you use what you have. I took a, an eight-hour deposition of 15 minutes. Okay. Wow. Literally rolled out the information on no, with no foreign. Dude, this is all the data. Now, their mind was uh, that he doesn't have any information. Dude, I had it down to the point zero 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 eight number. My lawyers were like, un-fucking believable. Okay. Two of them bought Bitcoin that day. Wow. They, they finally started to get it gone. Now, of course, they're watching and going, dude, this guy. Like, I've settled that whole thing mm-hmm. $30,000 ago. And uh, so these guys, these professionals look at this. This is the first case they've ever seen like this. This is going to happen all the time. Mm. Okay, you're going to get divorced. You're going to die. I want my children. All you guys living in Puerto Rico, you have a freaking target on the back of your head, okay? You're arbitraging a 20% tax play. You will be audited every year. Yeah. For sure you will be audited. The question is, how long is it going to last? How long is the audit going to last? Because when you're audited by a government, you don't have a choice not to do it. I'm broke. Tough. Okay. Oh, it doesn't matter. You have to defend yourself. And why someone, if they think it's worth a million then you have to start asking yourself, well, if you're going to give these to your children or trust, is the, the first question the government's going to ask my children, prove that your dad's money was clean money uh-huh. in 2020. This is 2050, dude. They're going to be like, huh? He left me the keys. Yeah. He left me my security. 
He did two-factor authorization and multi-sig, and he did everything. But I didn't leave them a storyline of what the investment was. Minimally, she will get raped by the U.S. government. She will then get hammered by the professionals, by the auditors, the accountants, and the lawyers. I'm not here to keep them honest. They, they will rip her head off. There's, she's just a client. They're just going to abuse, right? Yeah, yeah. So my position is every year I use Note 40 to b- start building the story. And then they're, one day they're going to have a book in the safe. Here are the keys. Here's all the stuff. And by the way, this is the full journey of these t- these uh, this Bitcoin. Because this Bitcoin, think about what's going to happen. It comes on Coinbase or Binance or wherever it comes. Sure. Then it goes into a wallet. Then it moves off a wallet into Fidelity because Fidelity offered me a really cool deal the other day. And then I move it out of Fidelity into some trust. And then I, and then I do some staking. Oh, those options that I'm selling for 30 grand. Uh-huh. I'm not, like, where are you going to track that shit at, right? right? Oh, now I'm buying NFTs on property because five years, maybe actually the NFT market will work for, for property. Yeah, for tokenization and all that. None of these people have a story. And you're going to have to answer these questions, okay? They're going to look like li- liquidation events. They're going to tax event, tax event, tax event. No, these were not tax events. They were moving from one bank to another. Yeah. Right? If you don't have the story, you're going to get hammered. So, and... Node 40 is awesome because every tax company needs it. So for me, it was like, I love investments like this. So you can see how I get all in, right? Oh, for sure. I go do the Bitcoin. Then I start looking around for businesses. And there are people out there that don't want to own Bitcoin because they don't understand it, uh-huh. but they want to own part of the industry. So I was able to buy a picks and shovels software technology around big data, big data analytics. I love picks and shovels. It has a mandate from the U.S. government to do it a specific way. We have a 350-page Treasury document that says if you touch crypto, you have to do this. Not kind of sort of. That, well, that came out six weeks ago. Okay, Six weeks ago with the ETF news, with the FASB change rules, with the Binance execution, what I call an execution, mm-hmm. in the FTC, FTX suicide moment. Uh, suicide meaning, hey, you got to go to jail. Yeah, yeah. So the ETF was never going to happen until Binance and FTX have been have paid a fee. I think January eighth, we know so much. We, we're going to have so much clarity. Um, and, and so all I would tell everyone, I think this is the right time to be in Bitcoin, but this is the right time to be in Bitcoin and to do it correctly. And, and you guys that are think you're, you know, good, you're going to go live on an island and not ever pay taxes for what you did 16 years ago, whatever, okay? Uh-huh. The future is not that. You're not going to be that. You're going to pay taxes if you live in the U.S. Um, and, and, and I like helping this become a more compliant environment because it makes it, you, you, you're not going to do business in the United States and not pay something. Right. Right. At least if you're a Joe regular. Maybe maybe uh, BlackRock doesn't have to, but you and me. Yeah, yeah. We're going to pay our taxes. I, th- I like paying some of my taxes if I know they're going for something valuable. So mm-hmm. I would just treat this as you would your car. You know, you don't just, no insurance. You don't fill your tires up. You don't do the oil change. This is exactly like maintenance on any asset um, to protect you from, you know, an overreach. So it's... it's um, There'll be more of these, too. There'll be a lot more. We're, we're actually raising money for the deal right now, um, and we'll see how that goes. But, like, for $20 million, you, you, we'll, I'll build half a billion dollar business. Th- three or four years with $20 million in cash. That's it. You do not need these $400 million wedges of capital. Uh, I saw a deal that earlier. I'm like, $100 million, dude? What do you need $100 million? Yeah, what are you going to deploy that on? You can't even deploy it properly, uh, uh, right, instantly. Right, and you're subsidizing CapEx if you're doing anything in AI, if you raise those you know, crazy valuations. It's just for the chips and for the storage yeah. faith and all that kind of yeah. stuff. So, interesting. Yeah, interesting. yeah, thank you, but thank you very much, and thanks for the uh, prop on uh, Node40. Uh, the, the gentleman that runs it is awesome. His name is Perry Wooden. He's CEO, very, very bright guy, and he met a criteria for me. I was looking for technologists, knew they didn't know anything about commercials. Knew they didn't know anything about contracting and strategy. So I I love playing a role in strategic. Hey, this is how, like, first thing we did was fire 2,000 clients. He was shocked, man. (laughs) I said, hey, those 2,000 clients, raise the price. Add a zero. I don't want any of them anymore. Uh He said, we're going to lose them all. I said, good. Let's lose them. 
and we kept seven, made more money on seven than the 2000. Yeah. And now everyone's raising their prices because yeah. to do this correctly, um, it's a big lift, but, uh, it, it like there's, there's a dust. That's awesome. That, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And then what you're doing, I mean, you're, you're benefiting from this industry. So yeah, absolutely. We're very, thank you guys for coming out of that. Thank you. Uh, we'll link everything below. Give them a follow. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank, thank you. you.